Go, 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 let's get it I'm a trapping fanatic, that shit automatic So I cannot turn it on or off okay. Bitches all on my dick, then she hop on my dick I'm like, why you keep hopping on and off? Your bitch all on my dick, she be doing the most I tell her little bitch, so extra Am my gun up on me, but I run up on me Niggas, they wanna fight, they some wrestlers Here, our grand story begins with the birth of Yoichi Isagi, born to two former pro footballers, Isagi was naturally gifted at the sport. From the age of four, he could dribble the ball way better than any other kid his age. His rapid development even caused him to play up in an age group in his club teams. Isagi was now at the age of six, was seen dribbling around the defenders of the opposing team while smiling. No one on the pitch seemed to be his equal and he enjoyed crushing them. He scores easily and then makes a mockery of those around him. He occasionally does pass when he gets tired, but even Isagi grows out of this habit. It gets to the point where throughout his life, Isagi becomes bored with playing football. He had become way too good, which made him begin suppressing his own skills so that he could try and enjoy football again. This is when we have another time skip to almost a 17-year-old Yoichi Isagi. He was sleeping in the locker room when his coach would go to sub him into the game as they were trying to win the finals for their high school team. Where is Isagi? The players on the bench then look towards the locker rooms and tell the coach that he's in there still. He then tells them to go get them as they're losing and they need some quick goals to close out this match. They walk in seeing Isagi laying down with his eyes closed. Hey man, you wake him up. No way dude. Last time, do you even know what he did to me? It's your turn to get beat up. Hey, shit for brains. You mind keeping it down? I'm actually trying to sleep. Isagi looks towards their pale faces while he stands up. So, we must be losing, huh? Whatever. I'll lead this terrible team to victory once again. This is one of our last games. Isagi throws his practice jersey off to the side and begins walking down the hallway to the pitch where he sees that the score was 2-0. to zero. Isagi subs in quickly and walks slowly onto the pitch without even stretching or anything, no warm-ups at all. Kira is the first one to notice how tall and lean Isagi was. So, you're their striker. Maybe if you were in earlier, they wouldn't have lost this match. Lost? I don't know defeat. I'm the best there ever is. Kira didn't know what he meant by this, but watched as Isagi received a pass. He stood straight up with it, with the ball below his feet. Let's see. He begins counting all the defenders in his way and size. Maybe one of you could shock me today. Kira runs towards the ball to try and steal it from him, but Isagi overwhelms him with dribble moves and gets right around him with ease. What? What was that? Isagi smiles and continues dribbling forward, doing the same with every player. He doesn't even pass as he eventually dribbles himself right into a corner. Wait a minute, he can't shoot from there. This is when Isagi cuts and turns, opening up the shot that curves into the back corner, hitting the post and into the goal. Well, that's one. The crowd then goes wild for this astonishing player, as they could hope to see even more from him as this match continues. Kira himself didn't even know a player like this could exist, especially within Japan. Isagi then walks back to his starting position and yawns. Hey, coach, sub me out, I'm bored. No, damn it, we need you to score two more goals, then I'll let you sub out. Whatever. Isagi goes on to lead his team to victory with his overwhelming talent and presence on the pitch. But he skips the interview, as they are his style, and he just walks away from the reporter. He'd rather go home and sleep. His parents, when he's home, begin showing him his potential and all the clubs that he could go to as they've been calling all day, especially after the match. He looks through and says he'll decide on it later. This is when a couple weeks would pass by, and Isagi gets one final letter from a place called Blue Lock. He tells his parents that he's decided, and he heads off to the facility. So, this is it. Hey Yoichi Isagi. Damn it, what now? Isagi turns, seeing an unfamiliar face. He then glares at him, not knowing who he was. Wait, you don't remember me? I'm Kira. Nope, doesn't ring a bell at all. Isagi then waves and walks into the facility seeing all the other strikers and begins laughing. It's amusing. All these guys think they could become Japan's best. 
He listens to Ego's speech while pushing his way through the crowd. Before Ego could even finish, Isagi was on the stage. He takes his hand out from his pocket and puts it behind his head. Well, I'm bored of listening, so let's just get started. Isagi walks through the gates once they're open, and many follow him, running past him as he was walking pretty slow. Days later, the players go to the actual Blue Lock facility. Isagi doesn't really care about his possessions at all, but notice he was only number 265. Really? How lame. If there are that many people better than me, I'll handle them myself. Isagi walks into Team Z's room, looking around. He then noticed that he was the highest number, so he sits down and ignores Ego's message once he appears on the screen and goes to sleep for a bit. As time passes, Isagi is asleep until Monk kicked the ball into his stomach, seeing a free target. Isagi wakes up looking around, noticing the two second timer. Plenty of time. He then slams his foot into the ball without any wind up and then it hits the head of Monk as he had curved around Kunigami. Maybe that'll teach you not to mess with me. Isagi then closes his eyes and goes back to sleep as Igarashi is eliminated from the facility and has to go back to the temple. After Isagi is asleep for a while, he has a dream of when he was younger. He was playing a match with his local club team as he was the center of the attention. He kept the ball close and didn't pass at all. Each time he did get a pass at the half field mark, Isagi was already looking towards goal. He kept winning and winning. There was no effort at all though. This is when Isagi soon realized that no one really could compete with him, so he takes his skills elsewhere as he discovers something that truly piqued his interest. He began sneaking off from practices more and more to play an underground league, which was a 3v3 tournament. Isagi began to have more fun playing and adapting his own form of street ball and indoor soccer. Since he was much more focused on individualism, this was perfect for him. His parents would, of course, be mad at him for this, but they still forced him to play in junior high and high school. But... When he wasn't doing that, Isagi was playing street ball. But even he grew tiresome of this just because of how good he became at it, as his freestyle play style of soccer suited him the best. But he began to not have anyone who could even touch him in any form of this sport. So, he became bored of it and truly lost his flame, the ember that kept him so interested in football, the world of it. He still did enjoy watching players like Noel Noah, who scored like a robot, or that's how he described it. Yoichi Isagi had become empty. No matter how easily he won, he still wasn't happy with the way that he played the sport, as it just wasn't fun at all. Each game in high school, he at least scored four goals before getting bored and subbing himself out or even leaving the entire pitch. Even if the game was close, Isagi never worried, as it was all the same to him. Isagi wakes up in the blue lock room alone, as it was dark and he had his head down. Jinpachi Igo then appeared on the screen as some light would come in the room, asking if he would join his team in their training. Isagi then looks up. It doesn't matter how much anyone inside this place trains. The only one who can beat me is me. Make sure you don't forget that either. Isagi doesn't train at all with Team Z and ignores any message from Ego. His assistant then becomes curious why he lets only Yoichi Isagi do what he wants all the time. Well, Yoichi Isagi is a prodigy who could become useful to our project. I know you've heard of the term iron sharpens iron. Well, that's my analysis of Yoichi Isagi. The stronger opponents he faces, the stronger he may become, or the stronger he may make someone else. Although I've never seen any footage of Yoichi Isagi going all out while playing in any match, I've followed his streetball career for some time and his high school matches. He's astonishing when let loose, but he lacks the mindset to become the hero that Japan needs. His assistant then complains again, but Ego breaks it down to her. It's possible through Blue Lock that his own ego may be reformed or reawakened to the point where Yoichi Isagi becomes the best striker available to Japan for quite some time. Team Z was having a strategy meeting when Kunigami stepped out to go find Isagi. He looks around the facility for him and finds him inside the cafeteria, laying down on the table. Hey, Isagi, right? 
Want to join us for the strategy meeting? We do have a match coming up soon. He hears no answer and then walks closer to see that he was asleep, so he wakes him up. Isagi sits up angrily, asking what Kunigami wants. Wait, you remember my name? Anyway, we're deciding the position for the next match. Really? That's why you came to bother me? It's simple. I'll make the decision for you. I'll play striker and you do whatever you want. It's either I'll play striker or I won't play at all and you guys will play down a player. Kunigami asked what he meant by this, but Isagi just waved him off and laid back down. He would have to return relaying the message to Team Z as it seems they have no real choice and have to put their faith in Yoichi Isagi. But they can't deny how good he is, especially since Kira is still here to even vouch for him. The next day is when their match against Team X was about to begin as Yoichi Isagi isn't even in the locker room. They decided to play around this and hope he would show up and decide to put Kira as a striker. The match begins in the same way it did in the original with everyone crowding around the ball and then Baru coming out of nowhere to score. He slams the ball into the net declaring victory when someone else does step onto the pitch. Yoichi Isagi steps on yawning as he was so tired. Damn, you idiots are already down by one point. Well, give me the ball and I'll make us win. Isagi starts with the ball and dribbles forward alone. Come on, all of you make this enjoyable for me. Isagi then dribbles around Baru who tried to confront him and then the midfielders twisting and turning in all sorts of ways as no one could even predict his movements. He does so in and out faints with the ball as well comboed with step overs as he has consistent nutmegs to embarrass his opponents as he begins smiling in a way but his smile disappears as he steps into the goalkeeper's box and is surrounded blocking off his shot course. Team Z's players then run in asking for a pass as it seems he needs help as he soggy then gets serious. Why would I pass when I have them right where I want them? He lifts the ball into the air and performs a scissor kick scoring a goal as he lands on the ground gracefully. You simpletons are just too predictable. Isagi then walks back to his starting position getting glares and looks from everyone. Before he can even step into place, Baru himself would step in front of him. Hey idiot, what's the big deal? I'm the king of this field. Isagi and Baru then look in his eyes as they were about the same height and the two of them glare at each other. Baru had never seen such eyes in his life before not even when looking in the mirror. King, huh? Consider yourself dethroned. As of now, the world of soccer will bow down to my ideals, not your own. The match continues and Baru dribbles forward around Team Z's players, but has some difficulty when triple teamed. As soon as he gets range for a shot, the ball is stolen by Isagi. Wait, what? Why are you so far back? There's no point to a striker playing defense as well. Who said I was only going to play offense? I refuse to lose to someone as weak as you. Isagi dribbles forward, ducking in and out through his opponents as he gets to the halfway mark and he looks up towards the goal seeing how many defenders that he has. Still, not enough. He decides to make this interesting and dribbles himself all the way into a corner as Team Z questions why he did this so they begin running in the box hoping he would cross it. Isagi then pushes off his defenders and turns to where he could use his right foot. I haven't shot from this angle in a while. I wonder how good it'll be. Kira then remembers exactly what it'll do. As Isagi slams his foot into the ball, going into the goal as it lands in the top corner, curving into it. Isagi has no reaction to this shot as well as he only turns to face Baru. If you truly believe yourself to be a king, get ready for war. Because I won't allow you to leave the pitch until I've broken that so-called will of yours. Every time throughout this match that Baru has the ball and tries to score, Izagi crushes him. He then begins to embarrass the so-called king by breaking his ankles constantly and shifting him off balance to where he falls. Izagi shows off his true skill and his shot prowess by hitting a knuckle shot, not even near the goal box. The match against the team would end 5-1 with Izagi having all five goals and leaving Baru in complete ruin. This defeat was something he had never tasted before. It was unlike anything he could ever imagine. He then looks to Isagi's jersey as he could only see the back of it, as the number that he saw when he walked away was number one. Isagi then turns to Baru, who was on his knees now frustrated as ever. Remember this, you disgraceful king. I'm the only person who could stand a chance against myself. 
Isagi goes to get some food since that's all he could really do in this facility as there was really nothing else. He was always bored every day since he doesn't train. Eventually, Isagi does use his highest rank status to retrieve a phone as he does engage in the outside world a little bit. Ego was seen reviewing the footage from that last game and was impressed. Yoichi Isagi, you truly are interesting. Scoring five goals while not even trying is no easy feat to accomplish. It's almost scary to imagine what you could do with the right mindset and proper training. But it also seems you already have your weapons pretty under control. You're ahead of many others here. Throughout the next couple of days, leading up to the next match, Team Z, well, they were trying to figure out how to get Isagi to work with them, as Isagi was only seen relaxing throughout the facility. Bachiro begins hanging around him, asking if he could teach him stuff and show him how to dribble like that. I don't play football the regular way that you're used to. I'm more of a street performer. I rely on my instincts. So if you want to learn something, just watch me play. Bachira nods and keeps following around Isagi, asking when he would train, but then realizes that Isagi doesn't train at all. Wait, why don't you train? There's no point for me to train. I'm already better than everyone here. You say that, yet you're in the bottom tier, on the bottom team. I like the way you think, Blondie. But if someone was better than me, I'd be able to sense it. Wait, really? I already told you before. It's my instinct. I can tell when their challenger would arise. Isagi turns to Batra, who then gets a glimpse of the monster that he was sensing inside Isagi. It's completely different from his own, as it resembles more of a panther than a human-like figure. It goes away quickly as Isagi nods, and Batra questions this, but Isagi had no idea what he was talking about. Isagi goes to sleep after having this conversation and is awoken by Team Z who tells him to suit up. Raichi and Kuon are the ones to yell at him as he punches both of them. You two are really loud, you know that? Isagi suits up and then says stay out of his way, but Kunigami puts his hand on his shoulder. You can trust us. We're your team. Team? I never needed one of those since I was an idiotic child. Isagi then walks out onto the pitch alone and then Team Z would arrive behind him to see Team Y. From what they could tell, it actually seemed that this would be a pretty even match. Well, except for the fact that they had Yoichi Isagi on their team, a complete monster. He starts with the ball and dribbles right into their opponent's territory. Let's do this. Isagi looks up seeing Iki Miko and his teammate Okawa guard him close. We've already studied your weapons and you're quite the player. Is that so? Isagi then dips his head and suddenly cuts right through the two of them with his speed. Not even stopping, he shoots the ball as it blasted into the back of the net with immense power and speed, shocking Team Y as they had thought they had them figured out. How boring. It looks like my senses are still too dull. You can't even bring out the real me. Isagi turns, stretching his neck just a little bit before the game continues. Nico and Okawa then pass back and forth as it leads to the ball being stolen by Kunigami, who passes it to Kira. He gets around the defender in front of him and then passes to Bachira in the middle. The young striker looks around as he sees two defenders, but then senses it, which causes him to pass to Yoichi Isagi, who was actually sitting down on the ground. Still, he trapped the ball perfectly with his feet and then stood up slowly. Isagi looks towards the goal and sees how many people were in front of him. Iki Niko comes out of nowhere jabbing at the ball to try to take it. You're still so foolish. Isagi nutmegs him and then shoots the ball as it curves into the near post giving him a second goal just that quickly. Team Y had no answers for this player. But it's not like Isagi was a team player either. Niko heads forward on his own on the next play. But Yoichi Isagi steps up to face him. Wait, he's going to play defense in this match as well? Before he can even think of what to do, He's knocked to the ground by Isagi's brute force, and the ball is stolen by him. You're weak. Isagi begins dribbling around this team, as many begin to notice his style. He does unnecessary moves in order to embarrass the opponent, and even drop them to the ground. Although, even with this, his expression remains the same, as if he was asleep while playing. Isagi then dribbles until he has five people guarding him in front of the goal. 
What's this? An iron wall? One of the players then rushes him, only to have Isagi flick the ball over his head as he performs an in and out into a Ronaldo chop, then to a quick elastico that makes the defense be on skate. Isagi then looks to the goalkeeper and fakes a shot, causing him to dive for the ball, as Isagi now slowly walks it into the back of the net, with both teams realizing he's in a completely different world of his own. Nico has no plan for this, as each time they try to get by Isagi at the midfield, he predicts their moves and steals the ball before they can even realize what happened to them. Isagi, well, he was a monster. Just what could he be doing and seeing that separates him from everyone else? The only person who could see it was Batra. That same flowing panther was active and around Isagi as it seemed it devoured every player that it came into contact with. So, that's your monster, Yoichi Isagi. Pretty badass. Isagi walked back, slowly looking at everyone, and then Kira walked towards him. You're pretty amazing, you know that? Pass to me. I'll be more useful than you think. Oh, really? How so? Kira begins convincing Isagi slowly. While the match continues, the two of them keep talking and don't even play at all, as Team Y is finally allowed to score. Yoichi Isagi then gets the ball back and sits with it for a moment. Alright, I'll test you out and see what you can do. He passes the ball, finally, to Kira, who smiles. Let's win then. Yoichi Isagi, Kira dribbles forward, ahead, and then passes to Kunigami as they perform a 1-2 pass and Kira looks up seeing Okawa and gets around him before passing back to Isagi. Now, with all four defenders around him, Isagi turns his back, seeing the ball, then float to him. That's how you plan to stop me? Isagi then jumps into the air, performing a bicycle kick that goes into the net. Team Y has no idea what to do, as five people just tried to guard him. He's just too good, but that doesn't make sense at all. Why would he be on the lowest part of Blue Lock if he was such a capable striker? It doesn't make sense. The match doesn't go well, as it would end 7-1 with all the goals being scored by Isagi, as they still couldn't get past him. After the match, Isagi is followed around the facility by Kira and Bachira, as the two wants to learn from him. Kira wants to learn how to become that dominant of a player, and Bachiro wants to learn how to dribble like that. Isagi eventually gets annoyed and decides to join a practice, but it was just the three of them. He sits down on the floor and tells them to show him what they were working on right now. Once he's seen what they can do, Isagi points out their flaws and what they should begin working on. It was actually pretty helpful in the end, as he left the pitch after and found somewhere to lay down. A day later, they would have a new match that they need to prepare for. Team Z has a serious meeting about Isagi and how they can get him to work with them. Kira says it might be possible, or it might be impossible, unless they primarily focus their offense around Isagi. Kunigami then points out how they're still in blue lock and they need goals as well. This causes everyone on Team Z to sort of distrust Isagi in a way and not want to pass him the ball. However, Kira had a realization as he wanted to continue playing with Isagi, no matter what. It was actually fun passing with him. If anyone would become Japan's best striker, it would be him. Kira himself just wanted to be there, not as a striker, but as support for Isagi as he began idolizing him in a way that Ness does for Kaiser. Isagi was seen leaning against the wall, looking towards the empty halls of the facility when Kira began walking towards him. Suddenly, a dimmer light begins to appear in the hallway as he tells Isagi that he has a plan and then he tells Isagi what Team Z plans to do, causing him to laugh. Really? They think not passing to me will have an effect on how many goals I score? Trust me, I've been playing football all my life, and I've seen it all. Isagi stands up, placing a hand on his shoulder. They fear me more than anything. He walks by Kira, but he's stopped by him. Let me help you become the world's best. So... You'd give up on your dreams to become a great striker for the success of me, for the sake of my success. How funny. You're pretty interesting, you know that? Kira nods, and then Isagi places a hand out. Serve me. 
For the sake of my goals then, Team Z is later seen walking onto the pitch where they now face Team W and the Wanima Twins. The Twins then start with the ball as they begin passing back and forth. Isagi and Kira shut them down before they even knew what hit them. As Kira passes the ball to Isagi, he dribbles through defenders. However, both Twins seem to guard him now. Isagi then drops it back off to Kira as somehow they were perfectly in sync. Good pass, Isagi. Kira chips the ball then towards the goal, as Isagi has to jump for it, going for what seems like a bicycle kick. The Wanima twins prepare themselves for it and tip Isagi off balance, as this is when he turns his body smiling. I don't need to rely on a shot like that. As I already told you idiots, I'm the best. Isagi leans back, even further, surprising everyone, as they have no idea what he's doing. This unorthodox type of shot. Isagi then kicks the ball while performing a backflip as it goes into the back of the net. He lands a flip and walks over to Kira. You did that pass on purpose, you runt. Kira only smiles, saying he doesn't know what he's talking about. Anyway, what was that shot you used? Is that one of the weapons Igo was talking about? Isagi then nods. Yeah, it's my formless shot. From that angle, I can shoot anywhere I want and no one can block it. Now, keep passing me the ball. Kira nods, and they reset the game. Team W does their best, but they can't even get past the midfield of Team Z without Isagi interfering with their plays. Isagi goes to pass to Kira, but Kuan and Raichi would go for the ball. We need to score as well, so we can't let you have all the fun. Isagi laughs and then dribbles around them, completely dropping them to the ground. Not bad for some low-life animals trying to enter my domain. Isagi then steps forward now with a serious expression, more than ever before. Let me remind everyone who I truly am. For a moment, Isagi taps into his true potential and uses his flow unlike any other as he moves around like a wild animal. His street ball movements added on to his immense speed and creativity make for some unrelenting combos that shake the defenders left and right and drop them to the ground. Isagi himself seem to have fun in this moment doing this, as he shoots with his left foot, scoring another goal. I'm Yoichi Isagi, the greatest footballer Japan could ever hope to have. Kira had watched on with amazement, almost trying to memorize that last play, as Isagi did it all alone. No wonder no one can beat him. What he has isn't just luck or some sort of skill. I finally understand you now, Isagi. You were born with a God-given talent.